Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Hannah McWilliams, and this is my text tech presentation. My topic I chose was uh, freaky fun science texts, getting tweens interested in reading about science. The first book I chose was When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. It is a classic poem by Walt Whitman and has been illustrated by Lauren Long into a children's book. The uh, book follows the story of a little boy whose parents drag him to an astronomer's lecture on the stars. And the boy grows eventually so bored, he decides to go outside. And when he's outside, he looks up and he sees the beauty of the stars. And I just love this poem. I use it when I do Zoom tutorials with my science students. And they love it too. It basically has the message of me, your teacher, I can sit here and I can lecture you all day and tell you all the facts there is about the universe, but you'll never truly value what I have to say until you go outside and you appreciate some stars. The poem shows the value of experience and it's important for us to notice the world around us and its mysteries rather than always relying on the word of someone else. The line that sticks out to me in the poem is as follows. How soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. The next book I chose was Uglies by Scott Westerfield. It is a dystopian science fiction novel that takes place many years into the future. There is a society where everyone is considered ugly until they undergo a complete reconstructive surgery that will also elevate their living and societal classes. It is um, challenging societal standards of beauty and confirmation. Um, I enjoy this book because it also challenges confirmation bias in science. Um, the main plot point is basically that scientists one day decide that world peace can be achieved when everybody looks the same but you really find out how horrible this reality can be. It also has a very important message of self-love, which is important at that age of teen adolescence. And I really enjoy it. The third book I chose is The Invention of Hugo Cabaret. I remember reading this book when I was 12 and I absolutely loved it. It sparked the science parts of my brain, it has elements of mystery, magic, and wonder. The Invention of Hugo Cabaret is about an orphaned boy named Hugo who lives with his uncles in the walls of a 1930s train station in Paris. Hugo takes care of the broken clocks in the station and when his parents died was left with a mysterious notebook that has the instructions on how to fit the automaton in the attics of the train station. The only thing is he is missing a key to turn on the automaton. I chose the book because it's a compelling mystery, it has historical elements, and encourages invention and discovery. It also has beautiful illustrations, an easy story to follow, and one of my favorite parts, I love when books have larger words, so it's just easier to read for me personally. Next we have 10 Women Who Have Changed Science and the World by Katherine Whitlock and Rhody Evans. I can guarantee if we ask an average middle schooler to name 10 scientists, they'll most likely all be male. And that's not their fault. They mostly haven't heard the cool, awesome stories of female scientists. Um, the book covers small biographies about famous scientists like Mary Curie, Rita Levy, Chan Chung, and so on. I chose this book because it talks about POC scientists as well that aren't covered in mainstream uh, scientific history. There is a disparity between men and women in STEM fields. So I think by opening up uh, a child's mind about the possibilities of who can be a scientist would, would be amazing and encourage the gender equality and opportunity in science. Next we have Gris Grimley's Frankenstein. It is a awesome adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and I absolutely love this book. It does an awesome job of honoring Mary Shelley's original story of Frankenstein and the dark 
illustrations and pictures really captures the dark tone of Frankenstein as well. It is interesting and it has a great characterization of uh, the main character, Victor. And I chose this book because it seems like an easy gateway into the science fiction literary classics. Absolute awesome novel. I don't know how many of you have seen the Big Bang Theory show. Um, I, I enjoy it. it. It's pretty nice. But most importantly, I want to point out the theme song, how um, it's so fun, so interesting, and can really show how cool science can be and how nerdy it can be at the same time. Um, the song is upbeat and covers the history of creation from dinosaurs, Pangaea, Carte, and more. It's goofy, nerdy, scientific, and fun. My favorite lyrics is the hook of the song, where at the very end it goes, Math, science, history, unraveling the mysteries. That all started with the Big Bang. And I think it very uh, much encourages scientific exploration as well. Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs by Caitlin Daughtry. I think this is my favorite book on the list. It is so fun. Caitlin Dotti is a mortician that has gained a following on YouTube, and she's famous for answering the creepy questions about death and the funeral industry that we don't really think about. Um, I think it's a perfect level of creepy morbid that will attract the, the attention of young readers and has interesting questions like, will my cat eat my eyeballs or... What happens to my hair when I die? Will it keep growing? So it, it's pretty fun. It utilizes a chic design and illustrations as well to describe the process behind death. And I think that teens would really enjoy the humor. We have The Big Book of Bugs by Yuval Sommer. This was a pretty fun book. I really enjoyed reading it. It was easy to read, easy to follow. It's just... Uh, exactly what it sounds, a big book of bugs. <laughs> and um, the book covers interesting information of nearly any type of bug you can think of. Uh, it's an easy read for kids uh, after they're done with their work in class, pull out the big book of bugs. Simple reading really covers the creepy crawly science of bugs and also is paired with interesting graphics of the bugs, nice pictures, compelling illustrations. Here we have Twin Speaker by Ku Yaginuma. This is a manga from Japan, um, rather early, early 2000s manga, but it, it's one of my favorites. The story is about a young girl named Asumi, and in 2010, when she was just a baby, Japan's first man-piloted space mission fails and explodes within miles of a major city. The explosion causes many injured and many to be killed. Uh, one of the injured happened to be Asumi's mother. And despite her mother later dying from her injuries, Asumi still wants to be an astronaut. So the manga follows her journey through astronaut school as she reaches for the stars to achieve her dreams. I love this book because it has messages of hope, uh, prosperity, promotes resilience as well and has realistic scientific basis on the process of becoming an astronaut while having young adult themes such as friendship, um, young love as well. And it's just a really fun, fun manga as well to get kids interested into the Japanese cartoons. This book is just so fun. Uh, the main character is, is so sweet and so awesome. I definitely one of my favorite books from my childhood and it for sure will be in my classroom library. Finally, we have The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a classic, 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 classic science fiction book. I absolutely love it. Uh, the book follows Arthur Dent, who is a good friend of Ford Prefect, who happens to be an alien. And moments before Earth is set to be destroyed by a cosmic construction team, uh, Ford abducts Arthur, and together they travel the universe and get into various mischief and mayhem. The book is great. It has a British satire humor. Um, fans of Monty Python 
would love this as well. It's just such a nerdy book and really opens up the possibilities of the nerdy science fiction world as well. Um, one of my favorite and one of the most famous quotes that pretty much summarizes the, the speed and pacing of the book, uh, as well as the humor, goes as followed. All right, said Deep Thought. The answer to the great question. Yes. Of life, the universe, and everything, said Deep Thought. Yes. Is. Yes. 42, said the Deep Thought, with infinite majesty and calm. This book does a great job of showing how absurd science can really be sometimes, and that it doesn't always have to be facts and charts and graphs. I think it'll really uh, spark an interest in science fiction comedies as well. In, in my students, I highly recommend. And that is it for my text set presentation. I thank you so much for watching. It was so fun to research these books, and I hope at least one of them has piqued your interest. Um, I definitely chose every book with young adults in mind for, for, just, for just getting their attention, really showing them how fun and funky science can be. Because a lot of the time, I think students can feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed by their science class. Um, and they may think it's difficult, but in reality, it, it can be crazy. It can be absurd. It's, it, it's just a great gateway into really getting interested into the field. So thank you. And good morning, good afternoon, and good night.